Hey, Dr. Ferguson coming to you from the Passion Cam again. And we've been talking a little about the kids being out for the summer and uh, being doing some activities that may be fun for them. And you know, I was thinking about so often in my office, I have kids come in, I ask them what they're gonna do for the summer. And, and reading never comes up as part of one of the things that they're gonna do. And the parents uh, many times don't have that to reinforce or to push either. But I get to thinking about Ben Carson. I remember reading his book many years ago. And Ben Carson has become a very successful neurosurgeon um, at one of your prominent uh, facilities in, our, in the United States. He's a pediatric neurosurgeon. But I remember reading his book and him talking about in the third grade, everybody used to call him a dummy. Between the third grade and the fifth grade, or maybe between the fifth and the seventh, I don't remember exactly, but his mother made him and his brother read a book or two a week and let them watch one TV program. Well, he decided to watch the College Bowl, which was a uh, program where you have to guess the answers, educational answers, and he decided to start reading about, I think he read about classical music, and I think he read about some rocks and things like that, but he began to enjoy reading. Now, mind you, his mother only had a third grade education and worked two jobs to try to keep them going. So what I'm saying is, it doesn't matter how much education you have, but just how much desire you have to see your kids be successful. So be creative, uh, do things like that, and you know, the rest is history. I, by the time Ben Carson was in the seventh grade, he was at the top of his class. And then by the time he went to medical school, etc., cetera, um, because he had developed such a well-rounded uh, worth of knowledge with his, um, as his mother made him read the different things, you know, he was able to talk about classical music with, with the interviewer. And, and, and the interviewer didn't go much past there. Because now here you got a, a kid coming from a, a, a par, impoverished area that knows classical music. So this kid has got to be on the ball, just the fact that he knows some classical music. So simple things like that can really give your kids a boost and take them to the next level. So challenge your kids, even if you're not the greatest reader, challenge your kids to pick up a book and read it or, or do it with them. Something that say, challenge them to say something you want to know about. Say, so you get a book on, I don't know, on kite flying. And you say, I'm, I'm, I really want, let's make a kite. But before we make the kite, we're going to have to go get a book and read about how you do a kite and why, which type of kite you should buy and how high it should fly. And so while at the same time you're going to make it fun because you're going to have a kite to fly, you're also getting them to read, to learn more about how to do it, why to do it, etc. So on that note, I just challenge you parents not to sit around during the summer and, and allow your kids to do nothing, but challenge them to do something new, something different. Um, challenge them to go out and explore something, uh, maybe just in the backyard. Go out and tell me, tell me how many different types of leaves we have in the backyard. And then let's look them up on the internet and read about them and see what type of trees are associated with those leaves. It doesn't take a lot of money to be creative, but it does take some time and some effort. Sit down, think about how can I be creative? What can I do that is fun for my child, but at the same time will be learning something? So I challenge you to do that. On that note, be blessed and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.